Hey there, it's Ian here from Alkaway, and today we've received uh, an email inquiry from Sam, and he's looking to, at buying a water filter system. He's interested in the ultra trim, but he wanted, wants to compare it to reverse osmosis. So Sam, that's what we're going to do right now, and here's the things that you mentioned that we need to talk about. Can we provide test data on the removal of sediment, chloramines, trihalamines, trihalomethanes, I'm sorry, Volatile organic compounds, chemicals, mercury, cadmium, copper, chromium, arsenic, barium, nitrate, nitrates, giardia, cryptosporidium, bacteria, viruses, hormones, bisphenol A, endocrine disrupting chemicals. Thanks, Sam. Well, Sam, the answer is yes, and the answer is no. So I hope I can under explain a little bit to you. But firstly, let's talk about the test that we did uh, with the, uh, uni the Griffith University Laboratory. What we did when we tested the UltraStream was we cooked up a witch's brew of chemicals that we knew were nasties and we knew people needed to get rid of. When we did that witch's brew, we tested it for the length of the normal life of a filter, which is four people drinking it, for drinking two litres a day for a year. So we wanted to know how the UltraStream worked at the start, how the UltraStream worked at the finish. Interestingly enough, I've never seen a test like this on any other filter ever, be it reverse osmosis or any. So Sam, when we did that, the difficulty of course is that you can't do everything. And I have seen attempts at what we call everything tests, uh, when people have taken things like Viagra and you name it, and stuck it in water and then put it through their filter and said, look, there's no Viagra. My suspicion is like that because there is no test for Viagra in water that you can do is that they've put some Viagra into water, they've put the blender into it, they've mixed it up and they've checked the total dissolved solids in the water before and after. Okay now I'm getting off the track a bit but I'm just showing you some of the vagaries that occur when we get into water filter testing and it's incredibly obvious to us in the industry that most water filter manufacturers really don't do a full test. Even if it's a very comprehensive test, it's only a test of a new filter because they all know that as the filter is used, it gets less and less and less. So we intentionally, I guess, overkilled with the ultra steam in the, in the amount of filtration media we had in. We wanted it to still be performing well in 12 months' time, and that's what we've achieved. Now, let's get down to the, to the uh, contaminants that Sam wants to talk about, and I'm going to have to refer to the paper here. All right, Sam, let's go. Sediment, yes. Remove sediment removal, yes. Chloramine, yes. <clears throat> For those of you who don't know, chloramine is a combination of chlorine and ammonia. And the reason that water filter people put it in to your water is it stays in the water better than chlorine. Chlorine, very few people know, is a gas that is forced into the water and will escape from the water if the water is left to sit. So chloramines are a nastier form of chlorine and they are a known carcinogen. So the answer is yes, and the reason it is yes is that we have a very expensive, very good form of catalytic carbon. And this is certified to reduce chlorines, chloramines, and a heck of a lot of other things. It has around about eight times the surface area of the carbon you'll get in your cheap uh, carbon filter. Okay, chloramines, trihalomethanes, yes. All carbon gets rid of trihalomethanes, ours just does it better. Volatile, volatile organic compounds are compounds of a nondescript nature which are caused when organic matter touches chlorine. And what you get is a volatile organic compound. It gets nasty. The answer, again, with our carbon is yes. All right, what have we got? Chemicals. Yes, many, many, many chemicals, but... Geez, like, you know, how long is a piece of string? Our major uh, media for reducing chemicals is, again, the, the, the uh, carbon. And one example of this is that in Kathleen in, in Australia at the moment, they have a real, real big problem with uh, PFOAs, which are chemicals which have come from the, the local Air Force base, which we use in firefighting. Uh, all of the bases, air bases around Australia are experiencing this problem. We checked into it. Uh, yes, our carbon will remove PFOA. So that's a good one. Now, yes, there are many other chemicals. There are, in fact, 600 chemicals which are 
with the EPA in America, which haven't even been worked, they haven't even got a, a, a regimen for fixing them. So that's a hard one just to say chemicals. Mercury, yes, interesting enough, um, good old carbon reduces mercury. Cadmium, yes. This is where we get into our KDF, which you know, for any of you who are, who are interested, stands for Kinetic Diffusion Fluxion Media. It is a patented media. It's the best media in the world for removing heavy metals. Uh, there are grades of this media. There is KDF 55 and KDF 85. KDF 85 is our choice. It's more expensive, but there are reasons we use KDF 85. And the reasons are this. One, not only does it reduce uh, or neutralize uh, heavy metals by the process of electrolysis, it's very smart stuff this. Uh, it, it was actually, um, it was an accident that the inventor came across it, which some of the best inventions I think are accidents. It was an accident, by the way, that we found that the ultra stream produced such wonderful molecular hydrogen. But KDF doesn't just, uh, just neutralize heavy metals, it also reduces the hardness of the water, uh, it also reduces the effect of sulfur in the water. So, it, 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 so it's, it's very, very smart, very, very expensive. There is no alternative. You just, if you're going to do it, you just put up and shut up. Okay, uh, copper, chromium, arsenic. The, uh, the media we use for removing fluoride also removes arsenic. Okay, uh, barium, nitrate, nitrates. Nitrate we don't remove. Uh, so if the difference be between buying an ultra stream and a reverse osmosis is your need to remove nitrates from the water, we can't help you. Nitrates are very, very hard to remove. There is an option uh, of putting a nitrate filter on your house, and it's going to be a very big filter because it needs a lot of media to get the nitrates out of the filter. Nitrates, by the way, are a huge problem in America, and they come about as a result of the great um, agricultural revolution and the use of massive amounts of fertilizer. So that's why nitrates are in our food. Okay, uh, nitrates, nitrates, Giardia, Cryptosism, Cryptosporidium, bacteria, viruses, hormones. Okay, let's do Giardia and Cryptosporidium. Uh, one of the other things that the uh, KDF does is it electrocutes uh, parasites. Um, and bacteria. It's very smart. It just it basically cooks them as they go through it. Now, one can uh, postulate that, well, is it in there long enough or does it have enough time to cook it? And I, the answer is, I honestly don't know. It's going to depend on the amount of bacteria and the amount of cryptosporidium, etc., etc., in the water. What I do know is that our uh, UltraStream as is, when we do our next upgrade, we'll have the new, uh, we call it disruptor technology in it, which has been tested and approved by NSF to remove 99.99%, and that's when it means they really can't measure it, of all of those things, okay? If you want all of those things removed and you're going under sink, you can easily put the disruptor technology pre-filter, which will reduce the load on the ultra stream and you'll get this amazing uh, antibacterial, antiviral, antiparasite, anti Giardia, anti cryptosporidium uh, filtration now, and it doesn't cost a lot more. It's an easy way to go. Okay, viruses, hormones. Uh, yes, hormones. Interesting enough, hormones, it's just carbon again. Bisphenol A, yes, it's just carbon again. Endocrine disrupting chemicals. I'll, I'll, I'll put them into a um, bigger class, and let's call them residual uh, pharmaceuticals because we have found that in Australia, and especially in America and, and also in England, well, basically everywhere, residual chemicals are getting into the water cycle. Uh, it's fundamentally people throwing pills down the toilet or people on uh, all sorts of drugs using the toilet. The toilet water goes down, it gets recycled, and those chemicals go through the whole rain cycle and come back to haunt us. Now, again, given the impossibly huge number of chemicals, we can't say 1,000%, nothing can say 1,000% that uh, we will get rid of all uh, pharmaceutical chemical, pharmaceutical residual chemicals. What we can say is that to the best of our knowledge and our research, yes, carbon, again, is the recommended uh, media 
Uh, I've gone to my experts in America and Australia and to the bulletin boards of the, the EPA and the, w the Water Quality Association. They say, yes, good carbon will do this. So all of those things. But let's get down to the basics here. What Sam asked was, what he's really asking what is best, reverse osmosis or uh, uh, ultra steam. Well, a little funny story. Uh, Jerusalem Post posted about a year ago that all the old Israelis are falling off the perch prematurely. And they found that the reason that they're dying prematurely is they're short on magnesium. And the reason they're short on magnesium is that Israel has taken to wholesale reverse osmosis conversion of seawater as their primary water source. Israel, being like Australia, is low in magnesium in their soil, so un un unless they got magnesium through their diet, which they weren't getting enough of, or through their soils, which they weren't getting enough of, they needed their water to supplement their magnesium. They didn't get it and they started dying in the hundreds. Now, the answer that, that reverse osmosis people give is, well, just put a mineralising cartridge on the end. And yes, it can be done. Uh, yes, it will supply certain minerals, but I've got to say that unless you really know your stuff, you might be putting something on the end of your lovely reverse osmosis water that's actually not an improvement because most of those mineralising cartridges come from China. Sorry, China, but that's how it is. Okay, now the only other thing that you need to know, because if you're choosing reverse osmosis and ultrastream, and I'm assuming Sam has, is looking at the undersink ultrastream, which is a really sweet package, you're going to probably have someone come and change your filters on, on your reverse osmosis once a year. They, they recommend, the people who sell reverse osmosis recommend this, A, because it's hard to know when your filters on your reverse osmosis are uh, depleted, and B, it's a good business for them to come out and change the filters. Uh, with the ultrasound, you change one filter, it's done. But the reason that there's <clears throat> this kind of, well, I won't call it a problem, but uh, um, attribute of reverse osmosis is that in all reverse osmosis, the first filter is a carbon filter. The second is the reverse osmosis membrane. <clears throat> Again, most of the reverse osmosis is sold in Australia come from China. Okay, There is no NSF approval, FDA approval on these units. They, they're, they're cheap and people want a cheap answer. The difficulty is that our experience, again, in testing ordinary carbon filters is that Yes, they start off day one really good and very quickly go down. Now, the problem with this is if a if fluor sorry chlorine chlorine which is the major thing that the at first filter is there to stop starts getting through, what it does is it eats away at the very delicate reverse osmosis membrane. When that happens, you don't know anything's going on but the water is no longer pure, okay? Now, if you know how to handle that, and if you know what to do about it, and you have some sort of system of regular um, change of that first filter, okay. Uh, if your manufacturer, your vendor tells you, oh, I'll just change them all in 12 months, look, no, no, because all water is different. And you mentioned sediment, you talked about sediment. Sediment is the major factor that wears our water filters because it clogs them up. So to say that all that you all reverse osmosis need changing in 12 months is just not true. We have places in Australia where we have to change filters every 12 months. We have other places in Australia where filters were, sorry, every six months. We have filters in other places in Australia where they will last well beyond their rated life of, of one year. So it's not, you know, it's convenient to say change more than 12 months because the vendor gets to sell another set of complete set of filters in 12 months but no and and, and Sam what I'm hearing from your uh, inquiry is that you really care about what's happening in your water uh, well so do we so fundamentally about the only thing we can't do anything about is nitrates uh, we have done the most comprehensive life of filter um, testing that we've ever seen we've never seen anything like it uh, but no, we can't get rid of nitrates. There you go. We get rid of all of those other things that I just mentioned. Uh, if 
And the question I have for you, are nitrates in your water? Because in Australia, it's not common. So I hope that helps, and I hope that helps anybody else who's considering the difference between uh, reverse osmosis and the amazing ultra stream. Thank you.